good story uh, of the team. Uh, makes makes me feel like I'm a kid. <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm. I'm calling my. Uh, my name is Daryl. Uh, I'm the founder of Neo Deck. Um, oops. Ooh, okay. You know what? I think we should yeah. just press. Yeah. Maybe the I'll button. just. Yeah. I'll just press this the button. Is a bit funky. Yeah. So I'm calling my 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 presentation a life of color. Um, it's, it's a pun because I I sell color cosmetics, but I'll explain a bit more later as well. Um, why I'm calling it that. So my background is um, a little bit. Uh, for, uh, I stumbled into entrepreneurship, so I was an accidental entrepreneur. Um, my last year of university, in 2011, I was kind of just looking for an extra way to make extra cash. Um, my girlfriend at that point of time, who's now my wife, she had been buying a lot of nail polish and I was like, what, what? <laughs> I should start selling nail polish, it's an easy product to, to make money from. So, so that's what I did. Um, I was lucky, I brought in a brand from the US. Um, so, and, and it was called Blaze, and I was very lucky to supply it to Zalora in 2011. Um, and that gave me the confidence to uh, do the business full-time after I graduated. I expanded quite quickly, um, opening push cards. In fact, one of my customers, very first few customers is here today. Uh, and so I, I, I think this is kind of the overview. Like, I just wanted to showcase like, Neo Deck through the years. Um, how it started from a very traditional business, B2B distribution, uh, opening up a push cut, uh, three push cuts, and um, how it uh, evolved to what it is today. Um, so I guess I just wanted to share so what, what happened or what went wrong for the business. Um, I was young, you know, at, at the start I was really young and, and impatient for results, you know. Um, expanded very quickly and uh, hired too many people. Um, spent all my cash on bringing in new brands when I didn't know if they would sell. So in the end, I ended up um, with like a few thousand bottles in my bedroom, uh, couldn't sell, ran out of cash, and had to think of something else to do. Um, so I decided to put the business on hold, and then I went to work for a local VC called Red Dot Ventures. And back then, uh, one of the investments that my company, uh, the company I worked for uh, did was in this very successful hardware 3D printer company. It did very, very well on Kickstarter. So, so I was just like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do that too. <laughs> I'm gonna do a, a hardware startup. We called it an espresso for nails. So it was gonna dispense custom nail polish. And uh, I brought in the co-founder. He was a chemical engineer with a master's. And, and you know, I literally went around pitching uh, to investors with just this 3D rendering. It's actually an espresso machine. We just kind of tweaked it and then I like, went around pitching and then sort of going to events and talking about it, like, I'm going to build this, I'm going to build this, and uh, I guess it's quite embarrassing to talk about that now, uh, but back then, you know, um, I guess I was kind of full of myself, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it, I'm just going to raise half a million dollars and, and get somebody to build it for me, right? and I guess at that age, um, yeah, it, was, it seemed like a reality, but uh, on hindsight, it's not. So we, we were just selling hot air, none of us had any experience running this hardware startup, uh, uh, fortunately for us, uh, for me, my partner who I brought in, he's, he's actually really a very smart guy. So we had this color matching algorithm at the back and we managed to get a small grant from the government, $50,000, and we managed to pivot a little bit to come up with this e-commerce app, which is um, still on the app store, I think. Uh, it, it is still on the app store, but it's a little bit different now. So it was an e-commerce shopping app, m-commerce shopping app, you know, allowed you to take pictures of items and uh, color match it to the nail polish. So it was it was actually not bad, but uh, again, yeah, on hindsight, a lot of stupid mistakes, right? I, being the CEO of the company, I kind of thought that, you know, I should be focusing on raising funds, right? That seems like the only logical job for a startup CEO to do uh, at that point of time. And, you know, I, I, I spent like 80% of my time just talking to investors and um, leaving, you know, all the... More important things like actually talking to customers and trying to get users on board. You know, I left that all. Oh, my interns could do that. You know, so um, it was kind of like I was leaving the most important thing to, to the interns. Nothing against interns, but it's just I, I should be doing it as well, uh, and I didn't. So you know, we're focusing on everything. I was talking to the media. I was trying to get Tech in Asia to cover us. Trying to get E twenty seven to cover us. Um, you know, and and talking to twenty over investors, just trying to get them in. And a lot of the future was hinged on 
closing that round of investment. So obviously, in the end, it didn't happen. Um, ran out of cash again. Um, my co-founder, the other guy that I had to leave uh, for family reasons. You know, his family is just like this joker friend of yours <laughs> trying to like <laughs> trick you into selling your life away. So uh, he had to leave, and I had to let the team go. So not as dramatic as an ending as as tailings. <laughs> Uh, I was a little bit depressed, but probably not as bad. Uh, I was kind of like just, for me it was kind of like, it's, it's five years since I brought in my first uh, brand of nail polish, that, since I sold my first bottle. And I was kind of, I felt like I was kind of back to square one again as well. And I, yeah, I wanted to stop. I wanted to quit. I just wanted to go and get a job. Um, just to share a bit, at that point of time, all, all this happened at the same time. When my co-founder left, uh, I got the keys to my HDB flat, so it's not a small sum, and I actually delayed the key collection so that I don't have to start paying the mortgage, uh, the bank loan, right? So I delayed it by six months. Actually, I just moved in two weeks ago. So um, left it empty for, for six months. Uh, had a kid, six months old at that point of time. Cute little bugger, but they, they're not cheap. <laughs> they, they cost and they, they just get older and older. So, you know, you start thinking about that, like, oh my God, all these fees, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I really, really wanted to, to just get a job uh, first. You know, I, I, I love what I did. It's just uh, it didn't seem like I was a very good entrepreneur at that point of time. Um, yeah, so I, this, this was sort of like the struggle I was facing. Um, eventually, I did continue. Uh, and I have three main reasons for that and the takeaway I have. So for me, I was very, very lucky uh, to have a very supportive wife. Uh, and I, I write hope for the right people in your life because I think it's, it's quite hard to intentionally find a wife that would support you. So I mean, we've been together for a long time and she was there when I first started. So you know, she was like, if you quit now, um, all those weekends we could have gone to watch movies together, all those nights that we could have hung out when you were working, would all have been wasted. Right? And, and, you know, so she, she actually told me to, to continue, you know, or she encouraged me to continue. Um, and I did, I mean, but if, if she didn't, I, I would have stopped, I wouldn't be here. I would, yeah. Um, so yeah, hope for the right people in your life, hope they support you. Um, this was the other thing, uh, I felt that I was not completely honest about myself and the business that I wanted to run. I just kept reading things in Tech in Asia and E27 and thinking that's how everything should be done. You know, raising a large amount of money from brand name VCs. Um, and then because I came from the VC world, because I worked for a VC for two years, I did have a lot of connections to a lot of VCs. So I kept pulling on all those connections and I kept calling them up and I kept pitching to them. Because um, I just felt, I just thought that was the only way to go. Raise the money, hire the people, get into the job and then sit back and let the company Right, right. So, um, the truth of the matter is, I mentioned earlier, I spent 80% of my time engaging investors. I actually hated it. I dreaded going for all these meetings. I dreaded asking them for money. I dreaded negotiating valuations. You know, I just, yeah, I didn't enjoy it. And then, so I, I thought back to how I first started Neodac in 2011. I started with $6,000. I was like, yeah, I don't need VC money. I don't really need an angel investor for that. You know, right? I, just, I just plug into my savings, delay my home loan. <laughs> And then, you know, so, and, and that's what I did, you know, I just sort of like, I just didn't feel that, uh, sorry, how do I say it? I, I, I think previously I felt that, that re not being able to raise money from a VC was a shameful thing for an entrepreneur. Uh, and I think there's no shame in running a business that's not VC funded, uh, personally. So this leads me to my last point, which is to really, uh, sort of understand what entrepreneurship means for you. At least for myself, I didn't understand what it meant for me uh, the first six years. Because I started it as a, as a way to just make extra money, extra pocket money. So for me, it was always an alternative career path. Um, it was always this other thing that I can do as opposed to, say, going to work for uh, another company. And I think when I hit rock bottom, uh, and sort of when I was really faced with the decision of whether I should continue or not, I realized how much entrepreneurship meant to me on a personal level. Um, and, you know, I see it as this, I see Neodec as this, as this tool. Okay, because the, the, sorry, I'm trying to articulate it properly. Um, so what entrepreneurship means for me is, is really this tool that can help me hack the, the, the world, the, the life that I want to create. Right? I want to have the best of both worlds. I want to have uh, a colourful life. 
uh, you know, something that's more than just about my work. Not that I don't enjoy it, but I, maybe I'm greedy. I want to have a good, fulfilling work life. Uh, and I want to spend you know, good time with my family, building relationships. I want to explore the richness and the vastness of the world. Uh, traveling, I want to do, I, I do triathlons, I want, I want to one day be able to compete in the Ironman triathlon in Hawaii. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I want to do, I want to learn how to cook, I want to learn how to do deep sea diving, and I want to have a fulfilling career as well. And I'm not saying you can't do that by working for others, you know, it's just that I personally feel that there's less factors involved if I'm doing it myself, if I'm running the show myself, and um, yeah, so that's really what it means to me. And when I think of it from that perspective, and I don't know if how many of you all would agree or disagree with me, uh, when I think of it from that perspective that entrepreneurship is a tool to help me achieve the lifestyle I want to create, then giving up is not an option anymore. You know, continuing on is, is not an option. Uh, it's, it's become a necessity because I want to create this life. So for all of you who are, like, I guess, you know, thinking of quitting or stopping or, or pivoting, or doing something else, um, I guess if you can really truly understand what your startup means to you, you know, and is it... For myself, it was previously just as a, a, a thing to make money. Uh, but now this, it comes from a deeper place, right? This, it, it comes from a point where I want to be able to come home to spend time with my family. I mean, it's not that I work less, it's just I have more flexibility in time. I can choose to come home earlier on a Thursday afternoon, but work later on a Saturday night or something like that, right? That's, that's, that's how I view it. And yeah, so continuing on is not an option, it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I have a quote to end it as well. <laughs> um, yeah, it's one of the quotes that I think about a lot. And uh, in, a, in a more crude way, a very wise man once told me that, you know, you throw shit on the wall enough times, one day it will stick. And that's kind of stuck in my head. So um, yeah, this is Nail Deck today. Hopefully it's going to be the final version of it. Um, we are a brand of its own, starting to sell in a couple of retailers, looking at overseas markets. And yeah, hoping to build up the business to a point where it's growing and bigger. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Daniel. So the thing about Daniel is that you know, I've known him for about a few years now, and to me on the surface, right, seeing from Facebook posts and everything, I actually didn't know that this was the struggles that he's been going through for the past few years. So I think it's something that you know we constantly want to share right now, which is on the surface everything can seem great, but you know even to your friends who see you, yeah. you know, passing it every few <laughs> weeks, we might not know this. So um, now I'd like to open the floor for any questions that we have for Daryl. Um, based on what you just heard, is there anything that you'd like to ask him right now? No? All right. Oh, wait, that's one question. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah, you like it? That's <laughs> one yeah, of so the colors just, we're um, selling. She was just asking, like, what color was uh, Daryl having yeah. on his so, fingers? So Neodec, I mean, Neodec is a, we, we produce our own colors. Uh, we are a custom cosmetics company. Uh, so we produce for clients. One of our key clients is Singapore Airlines and Silver. Um, and we have an app that you can take a picture of anything. So I can take a picture of this and send it to me and I'll make the bottom of your polish in that color for you. So we produce everything ourselves. We have our own proprietary way of making our nail polish. And there are also nine free, if you guys know what that means. It means it's free of the nine main harmful chemicals. Uh, vegan, cruelty free as well. So I test out my own products. It's, it's kind of like a sales thing that I do. Uh, so it's easier to, to convince my customers if I'm using it myself. And I'm a guy, so they're like, oh, okay, this, this guy like, really believes in his product. And I do, I do, you know, I, I actually really like it. And yeah, <laughs> there's no name for it. It's, it's kind of a color I was experimenting with. So. Thank you, Daryl. So big <laughs> round of applause to Daryl. And last but not